Hey, good evening. This is Kevin Stood on the Porch, sharing with you a great article from AARP Magazine this month, the one with uh, Kevin Cosner on the front. Um, the article is by Clint Carter, and uh, it takes you through the whole history of uh, post-World uh, War II onto the present and our food supply. And it's saying uh, the most important thing is what your body needs at age 50 up. And this is an important thing for us to know. Uh, the year was 1941. The National Academy of Sciences tasked with helping out World War II uh, food relief efforts issued a report that detailed what nutrients and what amounts Americans uh, needed to be healthy and to avoid diseases of malnutrition, such as scurvy and rickets. So that's what our uh, our grandparents, our great grandparents, suffered from. The numbers for protein, calories, vitamins, and minerals became the recommended dietary allowances. Those are our RDAs. It may surprise you that those RDAs are still driving dietary advice today. Uh, they underpin every nutrition label on every package in your pantry, and they're used to establish. They're used to establish eating plans uh, for everyone, from school children to nursing home residents. And while yes, the guidelines for preventing nutrition uh, deficiencies and promoting health have been adjusted over the decades. Uh, they're still building towards long-term health goals like preventing chronic diseases. We know that certain nutrients are better in higher amounts, said Catherine Tucker, Director of Center for Population uh, Health at the University of Massachusetts Lowell Institute. It's not just about preventing deficiency diseases, it's about keeping our systems optimal as we age. While the past six months have been the bleeding uh, grocery shelves for certain reasons. Americans haven't been at any real risk of developing scurvy. So we have definitely made progress that we've kept over the years. Still, it's a good time to reassess what your body needs now for maximum health in the years to come. This is your guide. Uh, first, optimize your hormone balance. Okay. Uh, it shows a picture of some of the fruits and vegetables that help you, uh, the walnuts and the uh, apple slices and uh, other types of uh, cheese and uh, pears. Almost no adult eats enough fiber, says dietitian and book author Kathleen Nieder. That's not good. Fiber stabilizes blood sugar levels, which is key to preventing or managing diabetes or its precursors. Uh, insoluble fiber, the undigestible kind, feeds bacteria in the intestines that help lead to hormonal balance. Women over 50 need 21 grams a day. Men need 30 grams. Only 5% of us eat that much. It's not good. I need to get more. Uh, neither suggest bran cereal daily or add bran to oatmeal, smoothies, or casseroles. A mere one quarter cup of del uh, delivers about a quarter of daily needs. Next. Eat loads of fruits and vegetables, and then replace the refined grains and breads with the whole grain everything. I'm having trouble getting my wife to do that. Brown rice has about six times more fiber than white. A barley serving uh, delivers about six grams of mostly insoluble fiber. That's good. So the first area to work on is optimizing hormone balance. Uh, now I'll read you a quick uh, suggestion about the 200 calorie rule. To halt age-related waistline creep, okay? Remember the 200 calorie rule. The numbers of calories you need each day drop slightly as you age, yet most people keep eating the same amount of food. It's simply, it's simple really, says Nancy Rodriguez, a professor of nutritional sciences at the University of Connecticut. If you don't change that, then you're going to put it on weight. Exercise alone won't restore it. So this picture of here, you should be eating only half of a pretzel and half of your uh, desserts. You should be getting hummus, uh, it says, and, uh, and things like that too. 
It says a low cal pretzel snack dip of hum with hummus is only 222 calories. Okay, I didn't know that. We're gonna have to go out and buy some more hummus. It's much more expensive here than it is in other countries where we lived. Um, the third rule is have one or more protein sources at every meal. Now this contradicts the rule about the 200 calorie rule. All right, to so stop age-related muscle loss. Age-related muscle loss, it says, uh, kicks into high gear around age 50. Notes Rosalino Ribeiro, a nutritionist at the University of Sydney. That's an issue for us all, not just athletes. So we sometimes think it's just athletes at 50 you have to worry about all this. Muscle is linked with everyday functionality like gardening and walking. Exercise is the main way to stay strong, but it also helps to double down on dietary protein. We know that older adults need proportionally more protein in their diets than they did when they were younger, says Christina Ritchie, MD, a professor of medicine at uh, medicine in Harvard. Her recommendation for people in their 50s is from one to no more than two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. That's 82 to 164 grams for a 180 pound man. So I get a lot more. So, uh, so one, to two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight okay some of your scales uh, do this in both pounds and, and um, kilograms so check it out get that by eating about 25 to 30 grams at each meal think of medium chicken breast or burger five ounces of canned tuna or a cup of low fat cottage cheese combining multiple plant sources like tofu chickpeas lentils quinoa in one meal also works well something to fall back on the Incas food is still popular today now back to what I was saying about the calories um, since up to 70% of your energy goes toward ongoing bodily functions experts call this your basal metallic metabolic rate it's a slowdown at this rate that explains why you need fewer calories with age so more protein fewer calories more fiber fewer calories your waistline is a good way to monitor weight. A circumference of uh, 40 inches for men or 35 inches for women puts you at greater risk for diseases. You stay below those numbers, look to cut 200 calories from your daily diet, but don't think eat less, think eat better. An Oreo has roughly the same calories as a small apple, Neither notes. It's easy to eat six Oreos, but how many people eat six apples? I could. Uh, but I need to. I think I come close with only about four in a day. So focus on snacks. Fruit is great as are nuts, raw vegetables, and unsweetened yogurt. Use snacking to add healthy uh, nutrients to your diet. Do that and you'll start skipping high cow junk food. That's pretty good. Uh, other points to make. A perfect day of eating in your 50s should be. Breakfast, you can have a three egg vegetable omelet topped with a large dollop of Greek yogurt and glass of 2% milk. Mm, sounds great. Mid-morning snack, an apple or a similar size piece of fruit. Uh, at lunchtime, uh, chicken and vegetable stir fry with chickpeas uh, served over barley. Mm, I've not had that in a long time, if I ever had. Afternoon snack, cottage cheese topped with blueberries and mixed nuts. Well, I like those. Uh, dinner, six ounce salmon filet served with black beans and vegetables. Ah, they said recommend kale somewhere in this article too. Let's uh, look at other items. Um, it's a sandwich there for you. Hit the dairy bar daily. Okay, for most people, um, bone mass peaks in the late 20s then begins a decades long decline for some um, 10 million americans that eventually results in osteoporosis a condition marked by weak easily injured bones your task get adequate amounts of calcium and its best pal vitamin d uh, to keep bones strong in the study of adults 50 and older who had recently fractured bones 43 percent were deficient in both of these nutrients so um, women should aim to hit 1,200 milligrams a day of calcium. Men need at least 1,000. You'll get most of the 
the way there with two slices of cheese in your sandwich, 300 milligrams, a snack of yogurt, 300, 200 milligrams in a two ounce, six ounce cup, a scoop of low fat cottage cheese. If people, 125 grams. If people do the three a day thing for dairy, they'll hit their calcium quota. Rodriguez says, eating leafy greens, uh, broccoli, beans, and almonds will also help you in this area. I'm glad to hear that. I like almonds. Uh, to reduce chronic inflammation, here's something for me. I have chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. Check out the new 2020 food labels, okay, to reduce inflammation. There's a picture of a, a low sugar salad dressing. They're saying be sure to avoid sugars in your foods. When your immune system was young, it zapped healthy uh, threats with surgical precision. But with time, the immune system can start attacking things that don't pose any threat at all. That out of control immune response is known as chronic inflammation. And it can cause all sorts of health issues from heart disease and depression to arthritis. The best way to tackle the problem, eliminate sugar from your diet, advises Hal Blackman, a pain specialist in Cincinnati. Studies confirm this approach. For example, in one study published this year, people who drank the most sugar-sweetened beverages had higher levels of C-reactive protein, a substance the liver produces in response to inflammation. Thankfully, new government regulation, regulations excuse me, make it easier to identify hidden sources of uh, calorie sweeteners. Starting this year, every big food company must list added sugars on its nutrition facts label. So when seemingly healthy sauce or dressing contains added sugar, you'll know. To further stifle inflammation, Blattman uh, recommends cutting out refined flour and hydrogenated fats. If you eliminate all inflammation, inflammatory food, half your pain will go away in two to 12 weeks. And you gotta be consistent, I guess. Uh, finally, uh, we're talking about the colors in your diet. Um, this will help you out if you're 50 or older. Keep your arteries supple. Look beyond the beige. Living color, bright products helps your heart. There's some bright vegetables. Okay. Um, as it turns out, natural hues such as blue, yellow, and red in your food usually mean higher levels of healthy antioxidants. Your diet needs to be colorful, uh, Neither explains. The more color you have, the better off you are. Take berries. In a recent study of adults, 50 and older, those who committed to eating one cup of blueberries every day for six months showed improved vascular function. Uh, I think that's what Jimmy Carter, the former president of the United States, uh, eats every day. Um, the study's authors credit a deeply colored antioxidant called anthocyanin, um, which is also found in cherries, raspberries, and blackberries. Betalain is another powerful big pigment. It's responsible for making beets red, and study published last year discovered that it could help those with coronary artery uh, disease improve their heart by lowering bad LDL cholesterol and skimming out homocysteine, an amino acid uh, that can damage the lining of arteries. The truth is you'd be hard pressed to find a colorful fruit or a vegetable that doesn't offer some kind of heart protecting benefit. Uh, lycopene, the red pigment in tomatoes and beta carotene, which turns carotene, carrots orange have both proven to be cardiovascular heroes. Uh, curcumin, the compound that gives turmeric its sun-colored glow has been shown to increase blood vessel function by 3%. The point here is that if your plate is a sea of beige, the lifeless color of fried chicken, tater tots, and dinner rolls, you're doing your heart a disservice. Research keeps confirming that eating produce such as bright uh, bell peppers, uh, purple cabbage, and yellow squash can keep your ticker stronger. And no artificial colors don't count. They don't count. Sorry, Fruit Loops. No Fruit Loops either. Okay. Thank you for listening to this article for 50-year-olds and above and how to eat right. Uh, this is Kevin Stoda. If you liked uh, hearing stories like this, uh, please uh, 
give me a thumbs up and also uh, become a member or a subscriber to this channel. Have a good day.